Hello bishes! Today is going to be a pretty busy day because I got a lot of things to do, but the great thing about having lots of things to do is that I can actually have shit to vlog about for once. It's not really like that busy because I'm really just gonna still be in my apartment for the majority of it because where the fuck else am I gonna go? But sorry, hold up the AC. Anyway, going back to the things I have to work on today, other than taking care of this bitch here. I have to work on a few pages on my comic book that I will be publishing, and it's gonna be due in like, the first sketches are going to be due in about August, so wow does time fly by fast when you're just having fun. And, <laughs> and after that, I also have to just finish up a comic for Instagram as well. And then afterwards, I have a meeting with a potential new project that I don't know if I will be on it or not. It's just an interview because, you know, your girl's about to end her current contract with her current project. So in a way, it's like I'm kind of getting let go, but you know, it's not as forced. But it was something that I knew about since signing the contract with this project. So yeah, I can't believe my time on this project is already over. It's just like just yesterday that I was vlogging my whole like, yeah, I have a new job now, but now it's over. Anyway, I'm gonna get started on some of the things I need to work on and we can talk more about our feelings then. Okay, so welcome back to my desk. I'm going to be working on just five pages of thumbnails for my comic book, because like I said, it's due in about half a month from now, like almost like 10 days from now it's due because that's when the first initial sketches are due and what I'm doing right now to manage my schedule with a full-time job and also doing YouTube videos and making Instagram comics on the side. The way I'm approaching this is just doing five pages of thumbnails a day. That is not a daunting task. It's more of developing the habit to actually do it every day, you know, that is the challenging part, but you know, five pages in itself of just really shitty looking thumbnails that just literally look like this. Like, it's pretty simple and not detailed at all. They're almost stick figures. That, in my opinion, is much more doable than putting a hundred pages of things for yourself to do within like, one week, you know? Unless if, you know, working on the book is your full-time job, by all means do that. But for me, I have like many things that I'm juggling. So I'm just like, I need to break down all of these things into small little parts. And as one of the quotes I've heard out there said, it's just like, how do you eat an elephant? Oh, you eat it in, let me just fucking Google this shit, okay? So this is a quote by Desmond Tutu where he said, there is only one way to eat an elephant, a bite at a time. For me, it's just like taking a little bit every day and I can really focus on that little bit of every day so that, you know, at the end of the day, the project in all aspects, I feel like I gave each part my fullest attention because I feel like, you know, sometimes I feel like when you're working on something for too long, there's going to be a higher likeliness that you're not gonna focus on it as much at some point. So I would just rather be like, okay, if I'm only working on this for one hour of every day, I can guarantee I can give it my full focus for that one hour. But before I start working, I just need to like give a shout out to The Naked and Famous, which has been my current favorite artist. I've been listening to them actually since I was in high school. I've been listening to this song called Come As You Are and bitch, like that shit has really been getting me motivated and inspired to listening to music again because I'll be honest, I've been in a dry spell with listening to music. I felt like I've been avoiding music for a while because once I listen to music, all my emotions and deep thoughts come out and deep thoughts and emotions are great, but I sometimes feel like I let it get to the point where it overpowers me. It just ends up making me more emotional than productive sometimes and more existential than I need to be. So I stopped listening to music for a while and I just like started to just listen to podcasts or just videos of people talking instead just to like listen to other people speak instead of letting my own inner voice speak. But I feel like as of lately, I've 
been needing I've been needing my inner voice to come back out. So thank you to the Naked and Famous for allowing me to once again feel naked with my thoughts. Okay, so I finished working on a few pages and again, if any of y'all are ever going to be publishing your own comic or just taking on your own big project what or whatever, just know that before it becomes some beautiful refined thing, it's always going to look like chicken scratch. Prior to this, like literally this is how all my comics kind of just look like before they're even what they are. They're just stick figures with just the expression or just a circle with the hairstyle. But just note how I didn't even like finesse some of the dialogue or put in a speech bubble. Like literally, even when it comes to publishing professionally, I'm still just like, I'm just literally vomiting out all of my shit and I will finesse it as we go on, but if we do not surpass the step where I just dump it all out first, there's gonna be nothing to work with. And for any of y'all who are curious with how I'm approaching working on a comic with so many pages, I just work with layer comps. I could just flip through the pages quite easily, and once it reaches a certain number of layer comps, then I will, I will start a new document again just to, you know, prevent Photoshop from crashing. But yeah, so I got a few pages done today, and, and we got that done in literally less than an hour so breaking things down throughout the day makes things quite doable so yeah I'm gonna go get some lunch now okay so I actually have a meeting with someone regarding a potential project that I can roll on to after the one I'm on currently right now ends all projects on shows or films you're on at an animation studio will most likely eventually come to an end and there's usually a high chance of you needing to go job hunting or search for a new job again or just go through that whole cycle of trying to impress somebody and hoping that they will accept you. I think this is a part of the process that not many people talk about where you know eventually you're going to be let go from your project and you always have to be reminded that animation is a very nomadic field you're never just in one place for the whole time like there are some people who can just only do one job interview their whole life and they can work at a place for 50 years whereas usually animation is kind of more like you're always going to be hopping around it's kind of like always finding a new home and in ways to some people that's scary and in some ways to some people that's more beneficial for their growth. I think the good thing about animation is you really build a lot of strong ties with people so people kind of look out for you and make sure that you are secure with a upcoming job or position and I know some teams are not like that not everyone is privileged enough to be on a team that is looking out for you and helping you to that extent and with that I understand why it's going to be difficult but usually once you get your foot in the door and you've worked your first gig or two it's a lot easier than being a student that just graduated and is trying to look for a job and and I went through that whole ordeal as well when I first graduated. A lot of this just requires patience unfortunately and fortunately but I will say that some of the pros to jumping around different studios and switching jobs and this goes for any industry as well it's not just animation is you do get to renegotiate your pay and you do get to climb up the ladder a little bit faster. If you're a revisionist, you might become qualified for a storyboard artist at this new place. And you can move up faster because you're not 
just in a project that you've been on for a while. But of course, even on that project, you can still grow as well. Like there are many ways that people grow in the industry. There's not one way. To some degree, you will look a little bit more appetizing to some other studios when they see on your resume that you have had a lot of experiences in many places and you have the ability to adapt like that. Just trust that, you know, with patience, it'll just come and whatever. That's just life and your life is not your job. So it's actually about three days after since the last time I recorded. A lot, but also not a lot, has happened in between. But basically where we last left off with each other, I had an interview with a potential project. And today, which is Monday, I had another interview too for another potential project. So right now I've really only had two leads so far for upcoming potential jobs. Again, I've had experiences in the past where during the interview people would be like, yeah, you're our top choice. We want to hire you, but then when they call you, they're like, just kidding, we went with someone else. It's fine, I understand that this is just how things are sometimes, so I left both interviews feeling pretty confident in how it went, and now it's just a matter of time telling what's gonna happen. One of the things that I haven't really been talking about though is that currently I'm in the midst of trying to buy a home with my boyfriend. We were thinking about eventually moving in together and purchasing a small starter home or, or a townhouse or condo or something like that because TLDR, my family has plans of eventually moving to California and my sister is currently living with me right now as well so we all have plans of just pretty much eventually settling here in california right now my apartment is kind of like a home for three people even though it's a one bedroom and in, in ways it kind of feels like a storage room more than like a living space because everywhere you go there's just like a clutter of things for either me my sister my boyfriend or my cat and my rent here in Burbank keeps increasing, so if y'all are ever interested in moving to Burbank, just know that they have no rent control. And with that, I'm just like, you know, with all this money that just keeps increasing every year, that's kind of going into a void of nothing. I would rather just start putting it into a property or something that I can own. So we were thinking about this house just kind of being a place not just for us, but it's like my sister could also live there if she needs housing. And of course, when my parents move here and try to look for a place for themselves, they have a place to stay at as well and don't need to like stay in a hotel or apartment either. But originally we were planning to buy a home within like this early fall time span, but I'm not sure if that's going to be the case anymore due to the fact that I'm transitioning in between jobs and that apparently does make it more difficult for you to get a loan for a house. And I did not realize that it was because of COVID that they aren't lending people specifically in my industry loans for homes right now unless if we have a secure job because apparently prior to covid it would have been okay because they understood the nature of the animation industry but because of covid now it's not okay so timing just is not really working out for that situation right now and a part of me is just trying to like be okay with putting that idea to rest for now and being okay with it happening later sometimes in life i just have to remember that 
Just because you want that next step in life doesn't mean you're going to be happier. What if you're going to lose some of the things that you love in your life right now? And by the time you're an adult, there are going to be things from this time period in my life I will miss. The situation is just what the situation is and that's just what we have to accept sometimes. Anyway, thank you for watching this vlog. I hope you enjoyed watching me just draw and also just blab about shit in my life. I do have a somewhat potentially exciting video for next week that I feel like some of you will be interested in because it's a type of video I have not uploaded here in a while, but I think that some of you might get excited by it, but I don't know. I can't guarantee your happiness. Only you can make yourself happy and that is the lesson from today's video. So thank you for watching this video and stay wholesome, bitches.